you cracked the soda already? Yeah, that shit. Uh, you always crack it like right into the mic. That shit is like fucking twenty five percent left. <laughs> Real relay family. We got a special guest in the building today. You already know the deal. Yo, I actually I ain't gonna even take the thunder from him. <laughs> Brandon's been on a roll. Last episode he was on a roll. He's killing it. I'm gonna let him keep doing his thing. Brandon, we got five, we got four four episodes left of the podcast. Go ahead, Barb. So this is going to be a very important episode for a lot of us in our age range. For the 20 people that watch, better put your listening caps on and, you know, open up the mirrors. You got two ears and one mouth. So listen. Budgeting. Amer- American dream. Budgeting, American saving, dream. finance. You already know the fucking vibes. We got Catherine Doyle in the building. What are you talking about? Thank you for coming on Thank today. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate so awesome. it. This we appreciate so you coming out. Yes. Now we, yeah, Bar- Barbara and I talk a lot and we talk a lot about finances and and and, and financial literacy and mm-hmm. credit cards and credit, cards credit cards and the three percent back and the budgeting and yeah. the saving which real relay fam like we think is very important mm-hmm. we think that people should be educated on this topic you know what i mean especially it's we're 25 in our mid-20s it's important early early 20s yeah you know it's very important granted we like to talk about music hip-hop oh, yeah. tech all the pop culture stuff, but it's also very, very important to talk about and educate the peoples on the importance of saving and budgeting, mm-hmm. especially if you're wondering, like, how do I get to the next level? How do I get to the next step in my life? How do I get to the next stage? How do I life? buy a gaming PC? How do I buy a gaming PC? <laughs> how, do I, how, do I, how do I save money so I can invest? How, would I, how do I save money so I can, the goal, the American dream, to buy a house? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what Catherine is here for today, to talk to us about today. Our sources, just trust us. Just trust. <laughs> just us. Trust us. Trust the process. Just I trust won't us, do you bro. Wrong. Just I won't don't do you trust wrong. us. Trust us. <laughs> anyway, so to get off, to start off, get after it. Brandon is gonna take us on this journey, and Brandon, I'm so excited, bro. Go ahead. I know you've been waiting I'm for it. Yeah, I'm so excited. So if you've watched any of the intros of the podcast, we always start with a very basic question, yeah. and you can take it however you want. Okay. Catherine Doyle, who are you today? I, that's a good question. That's a really good question. How I would define myself. I think I would define myself as um, an independent woman. Catherine Doyle is an independent well, no. woman. You heard that. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Um, I was actually just listening to the Destiny's Child song today. I nice. think it's one of the best ones out there. But no, I definitely think financially I'm independent, but also I am independent in every aspect of my life. Talk that fucking shit right there. <laughs> she told us that she wakes up at 4.45 a.m. <laughs> she says she's securing the fucking bag. Um, I do go to bed early, though. So even though I... Tell them what time. You know, normally 9 p.m. So. You heard it. You heard it. <laughs> Dinner by 7, digest two hours. Yeah, then nine, you got to just nine, what, right what's to What's your bed. favorite show to watch? What do you do before you go to bed? Watch TV or something? So, yeah, I do watch TV. And this Crazy is probably, Anatomy? No, I can't watch Grey's Anatomy because I'm a hypochondriac. And I would. Were you like a spider or something? No, like I would diagnose myself <laughs> with every illness that comes on the screen. So I can't watch that. It would stress me out. But I watch Criminal Minds okay. because that. Is more of a comfort TV show than Definitely. Grey's Anatomy. Sounds about right. She's in uh, what's that gym you go to called? Format. Talk so, to us. Format yeah. on Saturday. Talk no, to us I about am it. at Format on doing Saturdays. Some hit, some bar-ay. We're doing hit. We're doing all of this stuff. Um, yeah. So I plug it up. Part time work at Format. It is a fitness studio in the North End. So please come by and visit me. Say hi. I'm there every day of the week. It's a every day. Yeah, I'm there every day. Well, I'm not working every day, but I'm there every day, either working or working out. Um, the owners, Thalia and Caitlin, are two local women. Thalia lives in the North End, and Caitlin lives, I think, in um, Medford. So she's like in the area as well, and. They started this business during COVID. It was completely virtual. Like we were doing classes on Zoom. Um, They had been fitness instructors in Boston at other studios before. But yeah, they started teaching on Zoom and kind of like picked this business up off the ground from like complete virtual. And then they opened the studio back in January of 2022. Um, And it's been awesome. Like it's just a great community and it's a great place to get stronger and feel Independent. Yeah. We're gonna keep going with that keep word. Independent. <laughs> feel like the independent woman and or man that yeah. you are, um, which is really nice too, because it's definitely not. I feel like a lot of people like group fitness classes. People think that's like a girl thing or like girls do that, but this studio do whatever you want is so like Inclusive. men and women, and like I, I just feel like 
it's a great place to to get stronger. So if you want to come to format, the studio format on Instagram. <laughs> we'll plug up. I'll drop all the plugs in yes. the description box below for everything like that. Now, so that's your part time studio format. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your full time. Yeah. So I work in the financial industry um, and I was an English major at Providence. So PC baby. Yeah. Go Friars. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So I, you know, when I started at PC, I was undeclared. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I figured like everybody at PC does business. Like the business school is so popular and it's such a great business school that I was like, I'll just go into business. And I think I declared marketing. I don't even remember. That's how, typical, like, that's like, how long marketing. I was in the business school yeah. for like two weeks. Um, and I just didn't love my classes that I was in. Like I, I just didn't feel the same passion that I did in some other things that I do. And I remember I was at home and I was talking to my parents and my mom was like, well, why are you going to spend four years doing something that you don't love? And I've always loved to read. I've loved writing. I like, I'm like the weirdo that likes writing research papers. Like Perfect. I love like the analytic part of it and kind of just like seeing things under the surface. So I decided to declare an English major. Um, and then, yeah, so I, when it was time to find a job, I actually decided that I wanted to go into the business world and I just magically found my way into the finance world, which has been awesome. Um, and then I am in the process of getting my series seven so that I can go even further into the finance world, which is so Explain funny. Explain the series seven. So the series seven is a FINRA certification. FINRA is, uh, a financial, you know, like a, oh my gosh, I'm going to like the SEC. Yeah. Like it's a financial organization. Um, so they do like the series seven testing would be like general securities. So I'm learning things like all equities, debt options, just like a really base level of everything like that goes on in the, in the financial industry. Um, so there's two parts of it. So I took the first part, passed the first part. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, and then the second part I'm studying for currently. So it's been, it's, you know, I definitely, it's something that I know I want to do. Um, it's not necessarily like a requirement for my job currently, but I'm a goal. I'm a goal setter. I'm a goal getter. Yeah. So goal you know, getter. I decided I wanted to do it. So there you go. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> so there's her background. Yes. And now the meat and potatoes of it. We want to hold on. Hold on. I'm uh, sorry. I'm gonna cut you off. All right. Go I, ahead. I'm gonna let you finish. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you shout out your friends real quick? Shout out to the there girls. There you go. Tell them. Shout out the ladies. Liza, Tina, Kaylee, Kelly, Deidre, Abby, Sam, KCAL, Gretchen, Jenny from the Block, Natalie, and Aaron. They have been uh, my the girls rock. since day one. They really have since Ninth Floor McVinnie, which Ninth is Floor crazy. Ninth Floor McVinnie. Wow. We were the all powerhouse, the, the powerhouse, powerhouse. tilted towers, tilted we, towers. We made it, you know. We yeah. made it out of McVinney, and we've been thick as thieves ever since. Wow! So shout out to my girls. Is it the whole? Was it the whole night for McVinney? Um, we didn't. No, it was like I we, was in McVinney a couple times. We were all like in the same area. Actually, Gretchen and Christina's room was like a little bit farther away from everyone else's. But yeah, we were all and Deidre was in. I think she was in Ray, so she wasn't in McVinney. <laughs> but we we allowed her to come in. <laughs> you guys adopted her. Yeah, we adopted her. She's, Atlanta adopted her. <laughs> <laughs> she's a she's a true McVinney girl. So how's she from Ray? That's Cap. What are you talking about? She was in Ray. She That's lived she, in Ray. She from McVinnie? No. Is she, she in gang? She is. She is. She's. She valid. She's certified. Her, she valid? Her yeah. spirit. Her she, spirit she, she, she is She co-signed her. Yeah. Yeah. Co-signed. We, we picked her up. McVinnie so. adopted her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did. So, yes. Thank you for reminding me to shout out the girls. Hopefully you guys like this episode. <laughs> Better like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. You know? Like, comment, subscribe. Show, like, your, comment, and subscribe. show everyone. Show, show your mom. Show your family. Show your dog. I don't care show who you show. Show the love. Show the love. Go ahead, Barbara. So now that we got that out of the way. Yes. Me and Potatoes, we want to know your specialty and you're passionate about like the budgeting, mm -hmm. saving, all that realm. Passion, Tell yeah. us, <laughs> just give us like a, that, a overview about yeah. that and we'll just get into some rabbit holes. Let's talk, let's talk about budgeting first. Yeah. How the importance, let me, let me lay, let me set this up, right? Yeah. Budgeting. Mm -hmm. The importance of budgeting and just 
you fu- I feel like the the problem is with our age and money is you just pay day just comes and the check just fucking comes in mm-hmm. and it just fucking comes right out. Yep. All the time. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. so I feel like when it comes to like budgeting, like what exactly is a budget? Mm-hmm. How do you set a budget up? What are the parameters, the yeah. criteria? And why do you set a budget up? You're saving for what? And now, go yeah, ahead. yeah. So I would say the long term goal personally for me is to to eventually buy a house and actually have something that I'm not paying rent for that I actually am paying a mortgage and like making a smart financial decision there. Um, but budgeting is tough. I like I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely something that I didn't start doing probably as early as I should have. Um, So I think honestly, like you graduate college and you start your first like real world job and you get your first adult paycheck and it feels like, oh my gosh, like I've never gotten a paycheck that like gives you this much money before. Like I, like it's almost kind of it, like exci- it's, it, it, it is exciting. Make, it kinda, like it kind of makes the work you're doing like worth it. Yeah, you're, you're like, like, oh my god, I, I get paid. a little less. You know what I mean? Like, woo-hoo. like when the paycheck comes in, and then you're like, oh my gosh, but I forget why I'm doing this. <laughs> right? You're <laughs> you like, I mean? the money comes, yeah. and um, I think that like for me, when I first started working, so I started my job two weeks after graduation. So Same. I, yeah, so it was like a really quick turnaround for me. So I, you know, a lot of my friends weren't even living in the city yet so i was kind of like oh so you were the first out of your friends one of the first i mean they were all in the same area but like i was uh now that everybody's independent in, yeah w- independent the independent yeah pioneer <laughs> um so but yeah i remember my first paycheck coming in and being like oh my gosh look at all this money i can spend yes. like <laughs> it wasn't like look at all this money i can save, save. or like yeah. thinking about the future it was like this paycheck came in and i'm like oh it's money to spend. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I lived that way probably for a little longer than I should. It was like not necessarily concerned about saving for the future or um, thinking of like a long-term goal. It was like, oh, like paycheck comes in. Then This is when the next one comes in and you can like – and I feel like that's totally – like a lot of people are like that and that's totally – Normal. Yeah, that's totally normal because you're in college and, like, you're not. I mean, I worked in college too, but I worked at the gym. And, like, a college work-study paycheck is not the same as, like, an adult job paycheck. So, um, yeah. And then COVID happened. Like, everything, I feel like, turned everything upside down. And I was really lucky. I know a lot of people, there was, like, a lot of, like, career instability and, like, the market was crazy. Um, I was really lucky that, like, I kept my job and things were, like, I still got a paycheck, like, all throughout COVID. But it really made me realize, like, things can change like that. Like COVID was one of the best things that happened to me personally. Yeah. No, it really, honestly... Like, you think about it, like, it changed things so fast. And I was like, imagine, you know, like, if I did, if I lost my job today, like, I, what money am I going to have to spend? Like, I I have no money to pay my rent. Like, I'm not going to have money to do any of these things. Like, I need to be smarter financially. Um, so that was, I honestly didn't even have a savings account until... COVID. Like I just was like keeping everything in checking, which also is dumb. You should not do that. You should always have a savings account. Drop the keys. <laughs> drop, drop the keys. No. Um, but I, yeah. And then I opened my first savings account and I started, you know, just actively. I remember talking to my parents and my, um, my older brother too. So I have an older brother who's two years older than me. He lives in New York city, but he obviously had had like a little more experience in being two years older, like in the kind of like Makes working world. Yeah, Makes no. So he was always like, he's another financial role model of mine of just learning how to, like, he's so smart with his money. So um, I remember being home one time and, you know, having, saying like, I'm going to take the last two months, look at my like account history for the last two months and just see where the money went. And I honestly, like, that's a practice that I recommend doing. It's a tough pill to swallow. Because you look at it and you're like, oh, my god!" It's like looking at it's like looking at your bank account the Monday after the weekend. Yeah, you you're like, like Fuck. I should not have spent all this yeah, money. Why was I buying all these girls shots at the bar? <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I remember being like, look at 
where all this money is going and like I could be saving this. Like I don't need to be going to CVS and getting random things just because I'm like, what kind, oh. of, what kind of random shit were you buying? Like for, besides five dollar coffees. Well, I was. That yeah. was another thing. I was definitely getting a Starbucks every day. Tell them which what's, is what's your uh, uh, order? Ven- venti caramel macchiato. Let me get a venti yeah. caramel tall banana split. I do get a venti, but I get a blonde vanilla latte. Have, are you speaking fucking Chinese? So you have no fucking idea <laughs> a venti blonde vanilla latte is my go-to drink. Um, you can order that. Is that a thing? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Was it's it really called? good? A venti blonde vanilla latte. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Good a venti blonde. And sometimes I get less espresso in it just because there's a lot of espresso and sometimes I just need what, to be chill. What is the espresso? Just like a shot of like fucking straight ca- energy. Like, yeah. It's like, I don't drink coffee. It's pretty. Oh, you don't. No. I'm that's addicted. Just, that's just like taking like an Adderall, bro. Like <laughs> espresso. Yeah. A it's, double shot. Yeah. Damn. It's you just a like lot. fucking tweak. Jittery. I just don't like the taste of coffee. Ima- imagine like CPOW on a. Uh, on like cold, C4. on like cold brew, yeah. like <laughs> nitro bar. Remember yeah. nitro bar? Yeah, and, uh, when well, they would have the little cart. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna be C Paul nitro, bro, you're just not getting anything done. <laughs> my, my man, my he's man, almost like so riled up, he doesn't get anything done. <laughs> yeah, he's like so amped that he doesn't know like how to like. But you like can't it. even channel the energy. Yeah. yeah, it's just there. It's like the episode of SpongeBob where he's like trying to write the essay. Yes. And he just like three out four hours later, it's just <laughs> a nothing. big T. A big T. <laughs> the the. <laughs> oh yeah. I relate yeah. everything in my life to SpongeBob. Honestly, I've been watching SpongeBob. Recently. Recently, low key, that's like to like it's oh, funny. cool down. It's so funny. It's so funny. I think I've I've had a be- different type of appreciation for it as I got older as an adult. Yeah, and realized there's uh, so many like hidden jokes and like so much to sus shit behind yeah. it, behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so funny. But go ahead. Continue. But yeah, no, the five dollar back to the five dollar coffees. I definitely you know every day was buying coffee. I was. Big on the Uber Eats, I'd be like, oh, I don't need to That's grocery shop. I'm just going to, which is so crazy because when you actually look at it, the other day I wanted to just get a salad and it was almost going to be $30 to get a salad. And I was like, I'm not going to do this. Like, I'm yeah. not going to pay $30 for it. But before when I like wasn't thinking about it, I'm like, oh, is there money in the bank to do this? Sure. Like, just send it out. Like, yeah. I was not thinking. Um, also, like, even when I go to the grocery store, like, I would just... You buy whatever like i'd be like oh i want this so i want this i wouldn't look at the price like i'd get like the expensive pasta sauce that's like, the exact why? opposite of what you do <laughs> like, my man's in here like 325 324 yeah. <laughs> i'm looking i'm looking at the the orange thing, yeah not the white thing you gotta see you gotta but like and then that's what i do now like i'm looking for like oh which one is gonna be the best deal but before i really wasn't doing that it was kind of like can the money that I have right now like support this decision? It wasn't, there was no future thinking. So, what changed? So, what flipped the switch? So, I honestly think because I feel like what you went through is what people go through in our age yeah. and still go through like on a daily, on yeah. a daily basis. They don't know up how to, until their 40s. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, they don't know and, how and to get out of it. And it's so true. Like, like how I'd said before, the, the COVID stuff, knowing that like things can flip at any second, I think that was a big push for me, but it was also like, the understanding of instant gratification and like all the like things I was getting at like, oh, I'll get something at the store. I'll get a coffee. I'll get this. Like, that's fine. You can do that, but that's not going to allow you the funds to do like travel. Like I couldn't think, like I wouldn't even think like, oh my God, I want to take a trip. Like I wasn't going to have funds in the future to like book flights and book hotels and do things like that. Um, And then thinking about buying a house like and that was another thing too is my parents like it's always been something like they they have a house like that's the something dream. that they're have right exactly yeah. like the dream and I'm like I'm lucky that I have an apartment that I love and that I pay rent for but like paying rent isn't something I want to do my whole life there's no equity there's no ownership there's none so it's always something that I was like I want to buy something at some point and have something that's my own and um Thinking about, like, the financial decisions that I was making at the time, that wasn't going to put me in any position to kind of to get where I needed to be in order to do that. So uh, I just, I honestly, I took a whole day, and it took, obviously, it was not like a flip of a switch, but I did, when I was really thinking about it, I took a whole day, and I said, what am I making? Like, what's coming in? What do I need to spend? Like, what are my expenses? I have to pay my rent. I have to pay the utilities. Like, these are things that have to get paid. Like, 
no matter what. Are you on a solo or you got roommates? I have a roommate. I have one roommate. So, um, but we, we have, um, like some of our utilities are covered in our rent and some of them aren't. So there's a few that come out every month, but just making sure that like, that's another fear of mine is I'm like, I never want to get into a position where I don't like, I've spent so much money doing things where like my essentials aren't going to get covered. Like well, that. Essentials always need to be covered. They need to be covered no matter when what. When you get a check that comes in, the first thing I look at is like, okay, what needs to get paid yeah, first? Like what Rent, needs to come? Groceries, mm-hmm. utilities. Yep. Any sort of like fucking excess fee that like just needs to get paid. Student right. loans. Yeah. Any shit like that. Anything after that yeah. is considered excess fun everything else right exactly period exactly and I what I started doing is I started taking I looked at my paycheck I said okay each one like when this comes out and this has to get paid and then this is what I have left over I started taking like 20 like 10 to 20 percent of that and saying like I'm going to consider this also something that needs to get paid and just transferred it right into my savings account so like I took some of that money that I had left over and I'm like I'm going to just like, this is going to, it's not going away. Like, it's not like the money is gone. Like I'm just transferring it into a savings account so that, you know, it's not there like for just when you're swiping your card. Is that how your emergency fund started? Yeah. Yeah. So then it was like kind of learning about that. Um, but also I feel like it was something that I thought that saving money was going to be like the hardest task in the world. I don't know why. Like I just, was like, it's so hard to save money. It's so hard to do that when really it just requires, I think like effort and like thinking about it constantly. Right. Exactly. Like, and I'm so structured, like even my bag right now, like I have my planner and like, you don't need to be like this either, but I'm like, we're not, we're not, not. (laughs) I'm I'm a little like that. Maybe him and her, but not me. This shit happens like on a fucking daily basis. There's an overall scheme, but it's not as, Right. It's not as put together. As Bro, like, I got a heist planning board in my room. Yeah, he's got like a fucking whiteboard <laughs> in his room. Like where everything yeah. goes. You look like he's got a fucking mastermind, like fucking yeah. plot and everything like that. But yeah, continue. Yeah, back. no, but it's, I like, I'll write and I'll say, okay, like, this is what I need to do this week. This is, you know, groceries for, I started setting a budget for groceries. I used to go. What's your budget a month? Um, So for groceries, I try to do $50 a week. So 200 a month? Yeah, which honestly has been easy and because I'm just cooking for me. Like I'm not cooking for anybody else. You don't split else. with your roommate? No. So she does her own stuff. I do my own stuff. I, do, I did the same thing back in college yeah. too. Yeah. That was and, a mistake I made. Yeah. I was doing groceries with my roommate first. Yeah. But then I had like certain dietary restrictions. So I was like, yeah. you know, I, I can't do groceries with you anymore. Right. And right. What are your shit. dietary restrictions? Gluten and dairy. Just making sure we got that on camera. <laughs> 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 making, making sure we got that on camera because I forget. Yeah, so now you'll remember. You just now I'll remember. It's back. like, hey, you want to come over and have some uh, some pasta, some like chicken a parm? cheese pizza. I'm like, uh, I don't know, you, man. He could explain to me what it means to be like lactose intolerant. A hundred, I will still never understand. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm making chicken parm tonight. And we got we got chocolate milk and ice cream after. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck, bro? He's like, yeah, sure, I guess we'll eat it. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. You know, the yeah. North End would probably not be an easy place. There are some to... good uh, gluten-free alternatives. Oh, pa- really? Pastas, yeah. Oh, that's good. Just like rice flour. It, yeah. it tastes, doesn't taste the exact same, but it's pretty on par. Yeah. Can you yeah. eat like the like the bonza, the chickpea pasta? Yeah. I yeah. love that. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, $50 was what I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to spend on groceries a week. And I... I remember the first time that I went to Trader Joe's, which I love Trader Joe's. Love Trader Joe's. So Everyone good. loves Trader Joe's. Love Trader Joe's. But that's a great place to grocery shop. 100%. Because you can get so much. And, like, I used to go, there's a little market in my neighborhood, and I would go and get, like, three or four things, and it would be, like, $45. Because those little markets are always, like, overpriced and, like, things... Not like things are just more expensive because it's a smaller and it's not like a chain. And then I'd go to Trader Joe's and it would like I could get they got the fucking food samples. You could get like three it's, bags of things. It's like it's like a fucking food experience yeah. walking in there. It's yeah. like oh we're gonna have fun going to Trader it's Joe's. It's all like yeah. their brand shit. Too. Yeah, and like, I love Trader Joe's. I love it. Like I was just like that's what I'm gonna eat for dinner tonight. Like yeah. something from Trader Dude, Joe's. Dude, their pre-made stuff. Their pre-made so Indian. Good. Their pre-made oh. like Asian food. Yeah, my favorite gas. is the beef and broccoli. Have yes. you had that? Yep, that? and I do it with like the shrimp fried rice. Oh, that's so good. Or the Japanese fried rice. Oh my god, I know. I just went on the other day, but like Trader Joe's is like an experience. So. Yes. 
Um, I thought it. I thought it wasn't all that until I went. And Maybe everyone like, from the hood, trust me, it's lit. <laughs> it's lit at Trader Joe's. Fuck Market Basket. We out here at Trader Joe's. It's lit. We didn't have a, a Trader Joe's like really close by in Connecticut. I There's feel a like. Trader Joe. Well, I'm not sure if it's there, but um, West Farms across the street. Oh, that wait, plaza, yeah, there is. Where the Best Buy is. Yeah. Old Navy. Oh my a Trader God, Joe's I didn't right even there. know that. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, we also went to high school together. Yes, Northwest Catholic. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, no, back to like the grocery shopping and everything. Like I felt like... In terms of me setting my budget, there was so many little things that I could do that saved me a significant amount more money than I thought. Like, you don't realize how quickly things add up. Like, you don't realize how much that $5 coffee a day adds up or going to the grocery store and just putting whatever it is in the cart or, you know, feeling lazy one night and, like, ordering Uber Eats and then, like, getting in the cycle and continuing to do that or... Like, another thing is I love clothes and shoes, and I was always really bad. Like, I would see something that I liked, and I wouldn't be like, oh, I should wait and, like, I, save up for that and buy it. I was going to say, I think the main thing is here, like, I'm noticing the trend is, like, it's about, like, routine. Mm -hmm. You got to treat a budget like two things. One, treat it like a bill. Mm -hmm. That's my guy, Ramsey. <laughs> and then and then treat like a bill so pay yourself yeah pay yourself first yeah and second of all treat like a routine yeah because the same way you can bad habits can become routines good habits can also become routines as well yeah too like ordering uber eats that can become a routine yeah but so can saving money yeah become a routine right. you know what i mean right and like just like not falling into the peer pressure of having to do Something that everyone else does. Mm -hmm. Oh, this person orders Uber Eats, or this person orders these yeah. clothes, or this person goes out every single day of the week. You don't got to do that shit. They're not paying your fucking bills. No right. one gives a fuck. Exactly. You know what I mean? Do what you got to do mm -hmm. to make sure that you're straight. You will eventually get a promotion. You will eventually get a raise. You will eventually gain more experience for you to do more shit mm -hmm. and have fun and get after it. You can buy that designer clothes that you want. You could buy that that you want to buy. But save up for it. And that's the that's the benefit of saving. Right. Once you figure out the budget, you can then save. We're not saying don't buy nice shit. Yeah, no. We're not, not saying at all. don't buy nice shit. We're not saying don't, like you can go shopping. Live a minimalistic <laughs> lifestyle and yeah. like don't fucking do any of that shit. Like no, no, no. Like No, not at all. We're talking about just like the type of person that like Let's say that in college, coming out of college, that just fucking see I did this my sophomore year too. So I would just see the money come in and I would just I would. I didn't give. I was like, oh, it's just money to spend in here, and I would yeah. just fucking spend it. This is about being a young adult coming out of college mm -hmm. and starting to create a budget and a plan so that you can save towards things. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, it's that instant gratification mm -hmm. versus just like that long term success, right? In the sense of like, instead of just getting Uber Eats, like save your money so when you do want to go out with your friends, if you're all the fucking. 35 of you guys are all coming into town. <laughs> you can guys can go out and yeah. like splurge out. Right, right. Because what's more important, going out with your friends and spending mac bread and having a good time or that Uber Eats on a Tuesday when you're just fucking lazy. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or the final like, coffee every single fucking every day. Every day when you, you can know? just make coffee at home. Or do whatever. You I mean, get... I have, I've had a nap for lunch. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's the struggle. You know? I, I photosynthesize light. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. For dinner, it was just like may mayo sandwich. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, that's OD. But go ahead. It's a Brian special. Like, like another thing I think about is that like having a little like emergency, whether it's an emergency fund or like, having something like that, like that affects or impacts so many aspects of your life as well. Like you don't even, and I think people our age, like there's so many things that cause stress. Like, like you don't like the, just like being like work, the way that the world is right now. Like there's so much that can like weigh down on you and like be heavy that like choosing to kind of, I don't know, like I feel like financially putting yourself in a good position not and like a good position doesn't have to be like a certain number. Like a good position is relative to your experience. Yeah. To like your situation. Your, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. situation and like the, anything don't compare yourself to right. so many other people don't that person is making a hundred thousand you're making 50 that's cool right and that's the money to you is going to be different than it is to that exactly and it doesn't mean that they're better than you or it doesn't mean none of that shit they you could be making the most money in the world and be the most unhappy person in the world yeah like money is really not like i came out of, i came out of p i came out of pc i started making between 45 and fifty thousand mm -hmm. working at tech target mm -hmm. right and that to me was cool that mm -hmm. was an entry-level position that's real. 
Mm-hmm. And I was able to do a lot of the shit that I was doing. People were asking me, like, how you afford this? How you do this? How you do this? Because it's not about how much money you make. Mm-hmm. It's about how you spend your money, how mm-hmm. you budget, and how you save. Right. I'm not wasting my fucking money. Everybody making fun of me for the clothes I wear. I don't give a fuck about the clothes that I wear. Mm-hmm. I'm putting that money towards a 401k, mm-hmm. uh, a Roth IRA. I'm putting it towards a fucking my savings account. I'm putting it towards assets in the back end that are fueling yeah. the front end. Right. I don't give a fuck about this designer clothes. I don't give a fuck about all this other type of bullshit. That's just unnecessary. Mm-hmm. You got to live, like, just cut off the shit that's unnecessary in your life. Yeah. Like, for me, for example, like, we're, we're getting to, an, uh, I was getting to a debate with my friend, uh, my cousins, about the Mo- the Morbius movie that just came out, yeah. right? I just watched it. Yeah. I don't want to watch it because I think it's a piece of shit. <laughs> and, like, that's my opinion. <laughs> right. You, you know what yeah. I mean? However, they're like, why don't you just go see it? Just just, just go drop the $20. Like, who cares? It's just a movie, whatever. Yeah. I'm like, back in the day, I didn't have the $10, $20 to go watch a fucking movie. Mm-hmm. I had to watch the reviews. And see if it was good or not. Mm-hmm. And that's another way of budgeting and saving as well, too. Saving my time. My mm-hmm. time is money. Yeah. Your time is money as well, too. Yeah. Save that shit. And right. only use it for things that you need to. You So, therefore, you won't be as less stressed. You don't need to do everything and anything. But mm-hmm. you you start saving your time. You start looking at your time as money. And you start to, you start to save your time. You'll be less stressed. And you'll be much more easygoing. You want people want to work with you. And you're going to see as you slowly build, as you're, we're going to talk about, you're going to build yourself up. And you're going to elevate. Mm-hmm. And you're going to feel that happiness. Yeah. And it, like, just like exactly what you were saying, the, the kind of the stress aspect of it too. Like there's it, what we were just saying about like after the weekend, like you look at your bank account and you're like, Oh my God, like yeah. you, that still happens. Like yeah. you'll look at like, Oh my God, I can't believe I spent this much money. And this, Who keeps spending for, all like, my money? where does it going? <laughs> but like having kind of a plan in the back of your mind, like, okay, you know, this paycheck's going to come in this money, I'm paying myself first. This money's going to go away. I can't touch it. I can't touch it unless it's an emergency. It's going here. It does add like a, an aspect of comfort yes. to know like, yes. hey, I am making an effort to at least put something away. Like if something, you never know what's going to happen. Like yeah. it's always a smart idea to have something. Like it doesn't have to be, like we were saying, it doesn't have to be a significant whatever it's significant to you. Have at least like a thousand dollars in your emergency fund. If you guys want a point of uh, reference, I mean, I'd say three to six months of. Okay, uh, step. Okay, <laughs> for, us, for us, like, okay, there's people that are super aggressive like that, which we'll get to. But I think to like, like you said, don't have like you don't have to have a most the most aggressive amount of money in your savings or most aggressive amount saved anywhere else or wherever the fuck you put your money, investment stocks, mm-hmm. however you put it. However, I think you should have at least at least. You know, starting off like five hundred, then work to a thousand, and then after a thousand, yes, and you can have those three to six months worth of living experiences. But you gotta work up for that. Mm-hmm. That three to six months is very like intimidating for people. Take it back a notch. Do a thousand. If that's too much for you, take it to five hundred. Yeah. There are very there be people that you be you be very surprised at that it's hard to get a thousand dollars in there. Yeah, it's hard for me to get a thousand dollars in there. You it's know what tough. I mean? Yeah, it's it's definitely. I feel like that's the thing that intim- like in, that intimidates people from starting is like oh my god I have to have so much money to save like I can't like any anything is good to yeah. move in there because that's just like taking the first step and I also say too like like anything you're not going to be perfect at it the first no. time you do it like I definitely I fuck up every day I, I was like I had a point where I'm like oh my god I'm doing so well I'm transferring all this money into my savings account things are going well and then COVID, like, when it was, like, the summer when you could finally go out again, I was just saying yes to everything. And summer I'm like, of 2021. Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, money was coming out of my savings account, which I told myself that I wasn't going to do. I was like, I'm going to transfer money out. And then I finally kind of came back to it, and I'm like, whoa, 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 this isn't what I want to do. Like, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, consistently – Paying myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like that term, paying yourself. Yeah, pay, you pay yourself like a bill. Yeah, like exactly. Rent, utilities, groceries, yeah. yourself. Yeah. That's, and, and that's a savings account to right, me. Right, exactly. I mean? And so then that's like, it's just an extra layer of comfort to know that you're like, you're taking some step, whether it's a big step or a small step. Any step is like. Any step is a step forward. Any step will be farther than you were before, which was nothing. Exactly. And if you take even if you put $25 into something or if you put, you, you say, let's say, for example, fuck a savings account. I want to put it, I want to put a thousand dollars into investment. That's fine. Do fucking something though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Put yeah. it into something Yeah. that like, I there, now there's an argument saying that like, instead of putting it into a savings account, you could put it into a, an event, like in, invest it. Mm-hmm. That way your money is working for you 
behind the scenes, you're young. Do you really need a savings account right now for an accident or emergency? Most times you're, you're going to be fine. So my uncle's like, yo, just fucking invest that shit. But we, we're here. We don't recommend all that necessarily. <laughs> we just got to like clarify just, we're not financial advisors. We're not, financial we're not giving advisors. you financial advice We're just right saying now. like that's one way to look at it as well too. If you don't want to put it into a savings account, it's fine. Invest it. Do something with mm-hmm. it. Make your money. I, I like the fact I go to bed and I know my money's working for me in the back end. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That's great. That's just one way to look at it. But do something. Don't just leave it in your fucking checkings account and just yeah. fucking keep spending it. Humans are lazy. We make mistakes. Shit, right. that's okay. Right. That's fine. But make at least a centimeter of a step and a centimeter, a centimeter, a centimeter. And by the time you know, you're going to have an inch. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. and just paying attention to where the money, like I still do that exercise that I did the first time of like at the end of a month, if I'm like, oh, wow, I feel like I spent more money, like seeing where it went. Like, oh, maybe I... Uber eats a couple too many times this month or things like that and not beating yourself about like up about it because yeah. we're all human. You're young. You're gonna like, exactly. Like we we're young. We live in a city. You're going to be in Miami, like Boston, like they're fun cities. Like there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, and like you shouldn't deprive yourself of, experiences yeah. and like having fun yeah, have a balance exactly you don't but need like to go that's out. where i struggle the most honestly it is tough you don't need to yeah. go out every second day of the week bro and like here's the thing is like everyone's gonna ask you to do everything there's gonna be a moment don't ever feel bad about saying no because mm-hmm. at the end of the day there's gonna be a moment where like say everyone's going out saturday or you want to go out thursday friday saturday and like you gotta come to a point where you're like you know what i'm gonna just go out friday and saturday i'm just gonna go out saturday mm-hmm. that's okay don't feel bad about it there will be a mo- another moment where that person asks you to go out again. Yeah. It's all good. You know what I mean? Don't feel, don't beat yourself off of it. Especially if you know you got fucking bills to pay. Right. Just say it. Just say, yo, money's tight. Yeah. Money's tight. I'm sorry. And yeah. If the person understands, they're going to be a real one to understand. If not, then that's problems they got to solve. But I was going to talk, I was going to say right. talk to you. Yeah. Drop some keys when it comes to, so we talked a lot about budgeting mm-hmm. and the importance of budgeting. About saving. We talked about saving. We talked about the importance of creating a budget, where mm-hmm. you kind of were before the budget and mm-hmm. like what the COVID turn, you know, that happened, why you created a budget, like uh, the, like how you created the budget, like the five dollar coffees, like the, the, mm-hmm. the errors of looking back into your statements and looking like, okay, yeah, let me create a budget. What were you creating that budget for to save for a house? Like, what are some of the keys when it comes to, like, saving, essentially? Yeah. Budgeting and saving, let's say. Yeah, so I think setting a reasonable goal. Um, I definitely, I know I mentioned it before, but that's just what works for me is setting a goal and saying, like, hey, in this, like, a realistic period of years, I wasn't like, I'm going to save money to buy a house next year. Like, I knew that wasn't realistic, so I set a timeline of like five to eight years. So it's like in five to eight years, which is crazy, we'll be like almost, we'll be 30. Um, 30 is the new 20s, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, that's true, Back that's secure. true. But I was like in five to eight years, I want to be in a position where I can I can buy a house. Like I can have the funds to put down a down payment and like be ready to pay a mortgage. And, you know, if I take these steps now and I actively work towards it and I have a goal in mind, then for me, it makes it such like an a, an easier task to follow through on because I'm having something that I know that I want. Mm-hmm. It's not just like I'm putting money away for a hypothetical, like oh mystery. Yeah, item. like oh, I need to save for something. Have, a, have like a have when it comes the when it comes to saving and budgeting, like real when it comes to budgeting, realize where your errors are. Right. I think you need to be vulnerable with yourself and understand. Yeah. Listen. I've fucked up here, here, and here, mm-hmm. or here's some constructive criticism. Here's what I can do better here, here, and here. Yeah. Let's begin a budget. Right. Cool. Nice. Why are we beginning a budget? We're begin- we're creating a budget to save. Yeah. Boom. Okay. Why? What are we saving towards? Right. Let's be real and vulnerable with ourselves. We're saving for a house, mm-hmm. for a family, mm-hmm. for the house that will be for the family right. or for passive income, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Once you have that actual goal in mind, that becomes like a straight shot, yeah. Essentially, and it becomes something that you could do over time for five to eight years or whatever. What do right. you, what's the down payment on a house for? You? So I would say, like honestly, I feel like it, it kind yeah, of varies. Your, what was your goal? Like, so how much money did you I wanted save? to save like at least like twenty five thousand just to have like like for the house. Like I wanted to have that saved and like be able to put that down. Um, I wasn't really like more stuck on the number. It was kind of just like having something that I knew would be able to get me like 
something, something, something yeah. exactly. Like kind of more focused on saving as much as I could so that when it was time, like when I was at the point when I was ready to get a house, which in, in five or eight years, like I would have put myself in a good position to have the money like put aside there. Um, and I also wanted to, like, I know there's all these statistics and all these numbers, like people our age, like getting their first house, like some people put 8% down and some people put 20% down. I was like, I want to be on the higher side. Like I want to put more down up front so that right. I can like set myself up to pay less interest. Right. Like to, to do it that way. Um, definitely living in new England, the, the prices are very high. Astronomical. Yes. <laughs> so it also is something to like to take into consideration is that I, I mean, I grew up in Connecticut. We went to school in Rhode Island. I'm in Boston now. Like I love this area. Um, my family's still like all in this area and I'm such a homebody. So I know I want to stay in this area. So I'm like buying something here. I am going to be spending more than if I was living, you know, in Texas or like somewhere where the, the home prices are more affordable. Um, so that was kind of another thing I kept in mind too, is um, I am going to be paying a, a, a larger amount for- Because you're just living in right, the Northeast. Yeah. Right, to be in the Northeast. Um, but I think that that's also something that for me helped along, and I know I keep talking about like the goal and the goal setting, but it is something that I actively think about when, you know, say I'm out shopping and I'm like, oh, I want to get this new sweater. Like I want to get these shoes. And then I'm like, okay, I want these. And this is going to be like an instant gratification thing. Or another thing that's tricky is the Amazon and you just order it and it shows up at your house the next day. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, but this, like I could take this money and I could put that towards my savings goal. Like I can take this and put that towards my savings goal. I can, um, like, I don't have to just the little things have the little things add up. Um, so I think that that was also just like really like constantly thinking, you know, you don't have to think about money in like a stressful way, but just realize where you're, where the money's going, like what decisions you can be making that, are going to benefit you in the long run. So is it okay to buy a pair of shoes that you want? Yeah. yeah. I do buy a pair of shoes <laughs> that I want. Like definitely I wouldn't say deprive yourself of things. And I think that another thing that's really good about just kind of like planning, the planning and budgeting aspect of it is that you can see up front, you're like, okay, here comes this paycheck. You know what your paycheck is going to be. You know, okay, this is what I have to take out for expenses. I'm going to pay myself this much. This is what I have left over for fun. And then that's up to me of how I want to spend it. Could you break it down into like what percentages go into what? Like yeah. say, okay, from a hundred percent, like your whole paycheck. I yeah. mean, you could write off 30% of that, right? Right. So you, yeah. So say like, yeah, something like, and yeah, I know there's like yeah. a, there's that rule, like the 50, 30, 20 yeah, rule 30, or something 20, like yeah. that, which I think is a good rule to start with. Um, that like, if you're just like, okay, well I'm going to take 50% of this paycheck and take it towards, I think actually I don't do it as my paycheck. I take it like I get paid bi-weekly. So I'm like, oh, per month, this is what I have coming in. Cause like your rent's monthly and like utilities are monthly. So like thinking of everything on a monthly basis for me is kind of more helpful. Um, Less stressful. For sure. Yeah, too. So thinking of like, okay, this is what I have coming in this month. This is what has to go out this month. My rent has to go yeah. out. My electric. How do you track it? Do you use like a, like a, a Google Sheet? I do you use an app? I honestly am like Paper using, I, I use paper and pencil. I'm wow. so old school. Like I, I use my phone. I use uh, spreadsheets. Yeah, I use well, like a Google sheet. Yeah, like honestly, I at the that way you hold the yourself week, accountable. You too. do. Yeah. I don't want no app doing no bullshit. I want to. Oh, I mean, granted, everyone could do however they want. Have you been getting ads for Truebill? For Truebill? Truebill, yes. This no, app. I just there's like Clarity. There's a bunch of other apps too. But for me, like. I want to be held accountable. I want to make sure I'm the one typing those numbers in. I don't do any auto pay and none of that shit. You want to know when it's I wanna, coming out. If, yeah. if, if, and that's me. I know you like to do the auto pay and stuff like that. But for me, sometimes you get discounts by doing the auto pay technically. But for me, it's like, nah, if money is leaving this vicinity, it needs to make to sure it gets through me right. first. Then it can do it. Right. Because like, not that there's no money in the bank. I don't know. I'm just a control freak too, and I want to make sure that it's got the permission to leave before, before it shuts sail. You know what I mean? Right. You don't want to just like have it go away and not notice. Yeah, be like, be like, what the fuck? Oh shit! Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> like, yeah. oh shit, my bad. You know? Right. Yeah. And just have it go out without knowing. So I think that like, I definitely hold myself accountable and I look at my bank account religiously. Oh, I'm yeah. like, okay. This you, the is Google, like, you got the iPhone folder? The iPhone. Like finance. I have my, my bank at like my bank account on like mobile app mm-hmm. or whatever it is. And I, I can love see, mobile banking, yeah. yeah, you can see your checking account. You can see your savings <laughs> account. Like I just like am looking constantly. Also, I think that's an important thing to do because like things can get messed up all the time. Like you, like somebody can, I mean, there's probably been like a million stories of people who are like, oh, somebody stole my credit card and I had no idea. And they were like just charging small amounts. So the bank wasn't catching it. Like, I think that's another important thing to do is pay attention to what's going yeah. on in your bank account. Cause yeah. what bank do you have? I have Santander, Santander. because that's the one that was at Providence. Yeah. <laughs> so when I opened it up, that was like my first banking but yeah no i love their app it's like easy to do with all that stuff i have a couple although i have capital one too okay yeah um but yeah no checking that and really holding myself accountable of like okay this is what i have this is my balance this is like what needs to come out this is what i'm gonna pay myself this month this is what's Mm -hmm. gonna go here um and then this is what like i i'm gonna spend on my like fun money things like that but also I think it's not something that needs to be strict. That's why I don't love like the 50, 30, 20 is just because like some months you're going to be doing a bunch of stuff and some months you're going to be doing nothing. Like some months I can save more than the 30 and some months I'm like, okay, I'm going to save less because I'm going on a trip or like I'm doing this. And I don't think that's necessarily like anything to beat yourself up over either. Like some months I'm like, hey, I saved extra last month or like, I'm going on a trip with the girls. Yeah. Like we're gonna spend, you know, we're gonna go out to eat for a week. Deidre's so. about to run a whole fucking tab at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Deidre, <laughs> well, we're going to we're going this summer to uh, the Hamptons. Oh God, we got a four wow. nights at a house in the Hamptons. So yeah. content coming. <laughs> wow, God. but um, I'm shaking in my boots right now. <laughs> Lord. So, but yeah, things like that. Like I think it's not something that you have to be like very. I have to save this much. No, I every think it's. Time. I think it's just like I don't know. Holding yourself accountable. Exactly. And it's okay to make mistakes. You're young. I yeah. know this conversation might seem like very maybe like rudimentary or something like that. But guess what? It's important. You motherfuckers need a rudimentary experience <laughs> and an explanation because y'all motherfuckers keep spending your money at fucking Starbucks and McDonald's. <laughs> so until 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 I stop seeing motherfuckers getting free shit. <laughs> I see you. You got all these people. You got all these people going to the clubs, going to the bars. This person getting a free drink. This person up in the cl- in the in the in the in the bottle service section in the club with <laughs> the tables. They not paying for their shit. They they're mooching off someone else or doing something based off someone else. That's not their real money. That's 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 like some network. I'm gonna just hop on them real quick. You know what I mean? We're talking about independent women. We're talking about independent men. We're talking about independent people making real money, having a real fucking background. When you go and get a condo, you go rent an apartment in a nice-ass building, you got to make sure your background check is straight. You got to make sure your bag is straight. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure, like, all your shit is straight. Because if it's not, you're not going to move in. Half of y'all concerned about, why do I live here? Why does this suck? Why does this suck? Why does this suck? Turn around, look in the fucking mirror, (laughs) and wonder who the fuck is spending the money. You know, it's you. You know what I mean? Look at that. Assess the situation. Mm-hmm. Understand that someone is like either 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 you need to be vulnerable with yourself and understand that, you know what? I'm spending a little too much money. Let me back up a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You create a budget. But then and after the budget, once you create that, you create the savings. And the savings is essentially the plan mm-hmm. to where you want your budget to go, mm-hmm. you know? And like I said, whether it's creating a house or just, or like whatever the fuck it is, if you want to do something like yeah. or a trip or whatever, you got it. Yeah. But stop fucking over here saying that <laughs> you, 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 you're doing all this mumbo jumbo. You're getting lit every single weekend. Don't get me wrong. We get lit over here too. But, you know, I felt like personally, like, I would rather go out a couple times a month and get bottle service or get or get a table than go out every single fucking weekend. I'm so, I just got older. I can't do it every yeah, single fucking day anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And like, and not not because I can't physically. I can physically. 
It's just financially, bro. The way I want to go out and the way I want to ball is just different than it is in college. It needs to be a memorable experience every time. Yeah. It can't just be like, oh, I'm going out on a Friday and grabbing a beer. It's like, it's like I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. I don't care about grabbing a fucking beer. You want to talk to me? FaceTime me. You want to fucking call, call me. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to just grab a beer with someone that I see on a regular fucking basis. You know what I mean? Like, like I would it rather... ain't going to be shit to talk about. It's like, for what? We went up to it. I just fucking, fucking refreshed. You know what I mean? Like, I like... <laughs> I already, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't mean to be like a dick, but I'm just saying in the sense of like, I would rather save my money and stay inside for experiences. Mm-hmm. I want to save my money and do shit for experiences because this isn't college where it's a $20 bottle of fucking Burnett's and everyone lives around the corner. It's not like that. When we go out, you go out to a bar, you might get sick. You might, you, you know, in the beginning, you go out to the bar a couple times, you have fun, but you're going to get tired of that shit. And then you're like, okay, what's the next level? Clubs. Okay, let's go to clubs. Damn, that shit's expensive. Yeah, no fucking shit. People go up to me and they're like, damn, you go to Miami, it's like $40 a drink. You're like, no shit you're in miami mm-hmm. no shit you're in new york you know what i mean duh but that shit is not a it doesn't phase me mm-hmm. why because i got the fucking bag dude <laughs> the conversation is for those whether you're i know you or whether i don't know you but it's to to, to inflict that like that hard truth because at the end of the day we love y'all and we want everyone to be successful mm-hmm. and to be lit and i think understanding that is another layer of the budgeting and saving is being mature enough to like when to say no mm-hmm. and when to like it's not just about paying yourself it's about yeah. having like the restrict to be like i'm not gonna go out and spend four hundred dollars going out to fucking white bull or going out to fucking bell in hand i saw a, a video from snoop dogg where he's, he was talking about like his friends and how he like left them in in the dust pretty much and he described it like this so like if you both start here as you like progress up they don't move so like when you want to hang out with them you guys aren't on the same level so what do you do you either got to come back down to them or they got to come up yeah and like for most people can't come up most people can't come up so what do you do? You just keep going and you leave them in the dust. We don't want to leave you guys in the dust. Yeah. It's this like, is out of love right here. Yeah. Man's is going on a rant because he loves you. I'm, as, I, as I've gotten older and as we've gotten older, maybe you could, guys can sympathize with this as well too. It's like I'm running into more people that just aren't on the same fucking level financially. And that's just a true fact. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, that's okay. That's why we're here. We're here to we're, we're here to, we're, we're, here to we're here to help you to budget and right. save. And just se- tell you that like... This shit didn't come overnight. At the end of the day, don't get lapped. Don't get lapped. <laughs> don't, die, right. don't die for free. All right, we're coming up on the hour mark. Last thing I want to know is how you leverage credit. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> you motherfucker. That's why you stopped my rant on my own show to talk about credit. We'll run this shit. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell me about credit right go now. Ahead. I got the chase off I preferred. <laughs> I just, it got metal in it. No. If we, if we don't talk about this, he gonna get upset. So we gotta no, talk about credit, it. This is the last thing I wanted to hear from you. Credit's yeah. really, really, really important. And I think that that's another thing that I didn't think about until like probably a little later than I should. Because I was always like, why do I need a credit card because I can use a debit card and like all the money's there. Like I didn't want to think about putting something on a credit card and then being like, which was also, I think just the, like the aspect of my life of like, I was just spending the money as it came in. So I'm like, Oh, if I put something on a credit card, like I probably was going to put myself into debt because I was like, not going to have the money and my Uh checking account to cover that because I was just spending it. Uh Um, so that was another thing of like, I definitely would I would say that a credit card is important given the fact that, like, your credit score plays into so many factors. Like, you want to get a house, you want to, like, your credit score is is so important. Your credit, your credit <laughs> information. But, no, it is a really, really important. Um, and it's also something that I feel like helps you keep on track in your savings because, you know, like, that's How kind of like, yeah. A benchmark. Like, it's exactly. And it's like another bill almost that you're like, hey, my credit card bill is coming at the end of the month. I know that, like, this money I have to save to pay this off. Like, just kind of considering it as another expense that has to get, like, just, like, rent or just, like, your electric bill. Like, it's something that has to get paid at the end of the month, I think, is a way. And, like, obviously it's a good thing to have because if an emergency comes up and you have to, like, you know, spend something and put it on the credit card and, like, that – things happen. We're human and, like, stuff like that happens all the time. Um, But – you know, it, it really does help you stay more accountable and like. Do you have a favorite credit card? Oh. Or one that you use? 
No. Do you have any credit cards? Yes. What do you have? The Barclays card. So. What do you guys think about American Express cards? It's a flex. Right? I feel like everybody's always, like, talking about their... And like rap songs, they're always talking about the Amex. Cards. Yeah. The Amex. I mean, I got the Amex. I got the black card. <laughs> the black, well, yeah, the type of card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel, I feel the like goal, right? No one's, no one, no rappers out there. Like, yeah, I got a Capital One credit card. <laughs> yeah, it's more like the type of card. Like, it's a black card. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel you. Like, I have, uh, I have a couple of credit cards. I have like the Apple credit card, which yeah. I feel like is very common. Yeah. Um, what kind of credit card do you have? So I got a couple. Or plug, um, plug them up. Plug, plug up yeah, your favorite so, one. I don't have all of the mommy, but I recently got the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Mm-hmm. This guy is a little bit of metal in them. Um, you get like point like five percent back on travel. Mm-hmm. You get like three percent back on dining. Um, three percent back on online groceries. Why'd you pick this one? This one had a sign up bonus for eighty thousand points if I spent four k, and I just booked the trip for Puerto Rico for like two k yesterday. So I'm like halfway oh my there. God. So once That's I hit really eighty thousand, nice. or once I hit four thousand dollars, I'll get eighty thousand points. Which is equivalent to like a thousand dollars in their travel portal. So like I'll book another trip with it. Yeah. Completely covered by them just for spending the money. So buy two, get one free. Yeah. Basically get two trips, get one free. Pretty much, pretty much. So I love a um, deal. Yeah. I love a good deal like that. That's the most recent thing I've been into lately is just like diving super deep into credit cards and and, getting like the deals. Yeah. You know what's crazy is like DJ was talking to me about credit cards Uh and she has a specific, I, I think it might be an Amex one. But it's one of those credit cards that allows you to like travel mm-hmm. and you get to stay like in the lounges and right, shit. Like the platinum, yeah. yeah. Well, what was it? I think you Amex Platinum. Amex Platinum. Yeah, the Centurion lounges, the best lounges there are. And I was like, how much is this credit card? Seven hundred dollars like, a year. Um, well, let me tell you. First, <laughs> it pays itself off. She's like, like, it comes with all these credits. And I'm like, that's how you know it's gonna be expensive before yeah. she even starts talking about it. I'm yeah. like, how she goes, it's six hundred dollars, but <laughs> You get all of these cool things that I travel all the time. She does travel a lot. And I like I give you that. Is, yeah. Like you do travel a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? She and the and cool the first places. class is lit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then she goes, well, once you go first class, you never go back. And I go, <laughs> you never go back if you don't have a savings account <laughs> and you don't budget. He turns to Dave Ramsey on and he's like, listen, Deirdre. But, listen up. But anyway, as we kind of come into the end of the show here, thank yeah. you for coming on. Thanks what's, for having me. What's one final thing you would say to people out there that are like struggling to create a budget and create a financial plan or to or just having trouble understanding a lot of these financial literacy just Saving terms. that first $500. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honestly, and I think we touched on it before, Taking one, making one small step, whether that's getting four Starbucks coffees a week instead of five, making one tiny little change is a step in the right direction. And I think that it, it doesn't have to be something giant. You don't have to take half of your paycheck and put it in a savings account. You just need to be like paying attention to where your money's going. And I think that that is... You know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I want to make sure that I'm not missing out on stuff. I want to make sure I'm not doing this. And like, it's fine. It's fine to do things like that. But at the end of the day, you need to not just be thinking the short term, like, what am I going to be doing in two days? It's like, what am I going to, where do I want to put myself and where do I want to set myself up for in five years and 10 years and 15 years? Like thinking the long-term goals. Um, And that all starts, which sounds like such a, now I sound like a philosopher, but like it, it's. One step, like one that's step. You, one step forward. Make that first small step. And, yeah. And what the guy who went on, landed on the moon said? One like, small step one for man, one giant, giant step, leap for, giant leap leap for, for humanity, man, for yeah. mankind, or some yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like, and like, I don't think I think also too to add to that point is like, don't be a fucking sheep. Like, like. It's okay, like, you don't, yeah, you you don't, don't have, have to, to do everything. You don't have to penny pinch every you don't have single to penny thing. Pin, you don't have to do everything. It's right. like, you don't have to fall, go on a trip with your girls or friends or guys every fucking two weeks. Yeah. Like, plan your own stuff. Yeah. Like, it's okay to have your own story, your own character arc development. You're story. your own main character. Like, make, go, be like, the main character like, say, yeah. be, like, be like, oh, the boys are going on the, to the trip in Cabo in, like, in, like, June. Be like, I can't afford that right now. Let's plan a trip for December to go to Puerto Rico or some shit like that. Yeah. That's fine. Create your own trip and peep, and your boys or your family, the friends, they'll come follow you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they'll, and just in, and recruit them like the Avengers and you guys got a big trip going on. The Avengers. But if you keep following everyone else, you're just going to fuck yourself with your plan at the end of the day. Make your own decisions. Make your own fun. 
Because that's exactly like what you were saying. That's nobody else is spending your money. You're spending your own well, money. It's like that meme where like, so it's like when you when you finally realize who's spending your money, and it's like, uh, and it's just the guy punching them, <laughs> like looking so, at yourself yeah, in the mirror. Like, <laughs> it was you. But thank you, Catherine, so much for thank coming on. Thank you for today. having me. This was great. This I felt was awesome. I felt I always feel like an hour is like a perfect little sweet amount yeah, of time, man. We it's got fabulous. It's awesome. But I appreciate it, Real Relay fam. Yes. Don't forget to like. Comment, Comment, subscribe subscribe. on this YouTube video if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening to us on Apple and Spotify, don't forget to rate. Leave us any questions. DM DM us. We got like four episodes left until the podcast is over. Season four will then start up much later in the summer. Once I'm in Miami, we'll get a lot of different type of content. But... Catherine, welcome to the Real Relate fam. Thank you. I'm so Thank glad you. to be here. Thank you. You're part of the family. Yes. If you ever need us for anything, let us know. Thank you. Shout out you, you your friends, your time, everything, Real Relate fam. Thank you. Thank Catherine for the gems that she just dropped. <laughs> Hope you took notes. Hope yes. you took notes. <laughs> and Barbara ended off right that outro. Real Relate family, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, peace out. Deuces. Deuces.